what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out prime edge was a savage i'm looking forward to this by none other than wrestling gifts if you haven't subscribed to him go subscribe to wrestling gifts right now he makes some dope entertaining videos go show him some love man if you love wrestling if you love wrestling commentary videos or like going down memory lane wrestling gifts is your guy go show him some love right now let me know if you've already subscribed to him uh this is gonna be good i know he did one with the randy orton being a savage a menace edge <clears throat> prime edge damn i'm losing my voice hold on i gotta get some water for this one <clears throat> hold on hold on mm. <clears throat> la 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 all right we good now but prime edge when he became champion the wwe champion there was no stopping him he was truly a menace and i loved it and he, it was it was he was great as a heel even now edge is fantastic as a heel i'm looking forward to this video just going down memory lane let's get right into this one road to 9k Yo, there has never been a wrestler I've hated more in my life than Prime Edge. From 2005 until 2009, if you were watching wrestling and you heard, You think you know me. <laughs> when you heard that and the smoke came out of nowhere, oh, you knew there was some BS about to happen. You better hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your championships because Edge was coming and he was taking it all. Without a doubt, this man was the slimiest, the scummiest, the most disgusting, just the biggest piece of shit. There is no doubt. Was, in my mind that this man right here was the biggest super villain of our childhoods it all started in 2005 mm -hmm. when he took matt hardy's girl yep, well, started matt right hardy's there out. and it was a real life situation and it just oh it worked it worked it was messed up but it worked when nursing a knee injury at home, Edge started nursing Lita on the road. The WWE found out and made it a whole TV storyline. And once that happened, it was a wrap because Edge not only took Matt Hardy's girl, he then proceeded to beat Matt Hardy's ass live on pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. He took the man's girl and then left his ass a bloody mess in front of millions of people. And then he danced on his grave. Yo, Edge did Matt Hardy so dirty that, yo, if a man did me like how Edge did Matt Hardy, I'm going out shooting. But nah, <laughs> Facts. I've always said, yo, Edge would have to see me on the streets. <laughs> he would have to see me on the streets. Hey, yo, Adam. Huh? <laughs> and that would have been the last thing he said. Huh? <laughs> Man, as the weeks went by, Edge and Lita just got worse and worse. Once he had Lita by his side, it, it was GG because they would come out and every week just wild out on the Raw roster and then proceed to have like the nastiest, sloppiest, the most mm -hmm. disgusting makeout sessions every single week. It was Less great. Less than a year into his run, this man took Matt Hardy's girl, beat his ass in front of millions of people, sent him packing to SmackDown, and then walked into New Year's Revolution 2006 and yep. took John Cena's championship. Man, this will forever be the biggest bitch move i have ever seen in my life poor john cena was sitting in there in his own blood and after surviving the elimination chamber after outlasting six other men he was still champion it's like yo what a happy ending but no, no, there are no happy endings when Edge is involved. You know Here comes Edge with his Money in the Bank briefcase. He cashes it in and he hits him with two spears and ends up becoming the WWE champion. Yo, I'm not lying to you when I say that this moment traumatized me as a kid. This oh, yeah. For John Cena fans as kids at this time, they were shook. They were like, no. <laughs> they were, no. And from then on, this dude just could not be stopped. It was... Uh, people like to say that once, uh, you know, like, the Attitude Era was the golden ages for wrestling in WWE, WWF at the time. This era right now, kind of the Ruthless Gresham era, was, it was... Don't sleep on it. it this... This era was great. It had some great, fantastic moments. They, oh man, oh bro, stuff like this. Edge, seen a few. Love that feud. Loved it. Enjoyed it. It was this moment great. legit had me in shock, and this was a moment where I decided that I will never ever like Edge. I made it my life's mission to hate on Edge. I was going to be the Patrick Beverly of hating Edge. Yo, trust me, you have to be there to understand. I was watching this live, and I was so close to tears. I was seven years old, and John mm -hmm. Cena was my favorite wrestler. John Cena was my hero, and John yep. Cena always won, and he always survived, and he did. That was the thing. He did win the match. He did survive. But then this guy. This 
this piece of shit just came in there and took the championship. This is so great. Nah, th this moment changed me as a kid. The next night, he proceeded to celebrate that championship win by having a live sex celebration. Mm -hmm. Bro, what? How is this even allowed? Imagine being seven years old and your favorite wrestler gets... <laughs> For all the kids watching this, and I think this may have still be the highest rated segment, the most viewed segment in Raw history, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but this happened, ladies and gentlemen, this was on TV, this, this was on TV. It's clapped by this guy, and the next night you gotta watch him have sex on live TV while you watch with your grandma. <laughs> Do you guys see why I hate this man? Edge was just a sick, sick, twisted mm -hmm. man. Not only did he take girlfriends and championship belts, yo, for some reason, he also loved abusing old men for no reason. Yep. I remember watching Raw, and all I see is Edge just beating up a 57-year-old Ric Flair in a oh. TLC match. Why the f*** was Ric Flair in a TLC match? All you see is Ric Flair bleeding all over the damn place, getting suplexed off a ladder and just dying, and Edge is just there having the time of his life abusing this poor old man. Of course, this was also the year he speared Mick Foley through yep. a flaming table, but do you guys remember what he did in the mixed tag match at One Night Stand 06? As everyone knows, right, this is a wrestling pin, right? This is how you win a match. Nah, not for Edge. This is how he won the match. That is another man's wife. I am telling you, he is a <laughs> sick, sick, twisted man. He needed to be stopped, right? He Edge was running was around so doing this with another man's wife the same night he cost Cena the championship. Uh -huh. And then a few weeks later, he casually went to John Cena's house and, and slapped, slapped his dad in the living room. This, this guy was possessed. He was just the definition of evil. I'm surprised he didn't wrestle in like Black Air Force. He had Black Air Force energy. If there's any wrestler that had Black Air Force energy, it was definitely Edge. Forces. Yo, he needed to be stopped, man. He needed to be stopped. But but that, that was a problem. He could never be stopped because every time he got clapped, every time someone did anything to Edge, yeah, he would disappear for a bit, but he would always come back and he would always come back even stronger, even scummier, even slimier. This man was like the Frieza of WWE. Mm -hmm. Let me show you what I mean, okay? So John Cena threw this man into a lake, right? He threw him off a ladder into yep. a bunch of tables. He beat him in a cage. That, that TLC match was... Was fantastic even though <laughs> everyone was pro edge that was a fantastic TLC match I think it was at Unforgiven correct me if I'm wrong cage match and I remember watching WrestleMania 23 when Jeff Hardy dropped the leg drop on him it looked like edge died it yeah. literally looked like edge died and that was the greatest moment of my life <laughs> seeing edge get carried away on a stretcher I was like that was yes, a sick he's moment dead. he's gone he's not winning this match hallelujah edge is not a problem anymore but no no, because he only came back slimier and scummier. It was May 2007, and it was an episode of SmackDown. The main event was super uh -huh. hyped up, and it was for the World Heavyweight Championship. It was Batista versus The Undertaker. Both men escaped at the exact same time, and The Undertaker, he got clapped, no doubt, but he was still walking out champion, and it was respectable. The Undertaker was a respectable champion. But then, you know, Mark Henry's music played, and I'm like, okay. So Mark Henry just beats up The Undertaker, leaves him lying there dead, and it's like, all right, cool, Mark. I don't know why you're acting up. Not like the Undertaker's gonna <laughs> beat your ass next week. It was mine and Mark Henry was not a problem. And I was like, all right, cool. What a great episode of SmackDown. I can't wait for next week. It was amazing. You know, it's time to go to sleep. But then it happened. You think you, you know, know me? On SmackDown. <laughs> on <Yep>. the <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Edge. I think, oh yeah, and this is when he did win the briefcase from, at the time, Mr. Kennedy. Mr. Kennedy put the briefcase on the line and then he beat him for it. So this is when he took, he had another briefcase. Oh man. W on the show that was supposed to be my safe place on Friday night, on the night that I was not supposed to see him, uh -huh. out came Edge. Yo, he had the briefcase in his hand and it was happening again. It, it was literally happening again. It was like deja vu. Yep. Remember how I said he traumatized me in 06 when he <laughs> passed on John Cena? Well, you know what? This was worse. This was on SmackDown. This was on the show he wasn't even on. He was a Raw wrestler, but yep. nah, nah, here he is. Yo, SmackDown was my safe space. Okay, this <laughs> was, was supposed to be the show that he made here. My edge guard was all the way down. I was chilling, I was relaxing, but no, here we come <laughs> out there once again, and once again he finesses the system and becomes yep. world heavyweight yep. champion. The poor Undertaker is lying there in his blood. He is deader than usual, and Edge just goes in there and becomes champion. And at that And they had a good few too. Oh man, bro. Oh. Edge.
Gotta give him his flowers. Point. Bro. That's when it hit me. That's when I realized, yo, it didn't matter if it was Raw. It didn't matter if it was SmackDown. It didn't matter if you were injured at home because he'll take your wife on the road. And if he runs <laughs> at home, it doesn't matter. He'll go home and slap your dad. Like, it didn't matter if you were 57 years old. It didn't matter if you were a dead man. Edge was always going to tweak. And yo, I swear to you, this was the worst thing he ever did because once Edge came to SmackDown, this man reached another level. Mm -hmm. I thought Edge was bad on Raw, but no, no, no. Once he came to SmackDown, it was over. Edge for the next few years would go on to pillage, ravage, just destroy SmackDown with the scummiest tactics I had ever seen in my life. Yeah, Every time it. there was a match where I'm like, oh my god, Edge is finally gonna die. No, he, he never died. He always won with a roll up. He won by escaping the cage, running mm -hmm. through the crowd. Every time I'm like, yo, he's finally gonna get clapped. He never did. And if by some divine miracle he did get clapped, it, it didn't matter. Okay, it didn't matter. In July of 2007, he actually got injured and that meant he had to give up his title. He had to surrender the title and he was no longer a champion and i remember being so happy just sitting there watching <laughs> in the ring he was crying <laughs> yo he had a personal vendetta yes fuck you it <laughs> and he gave the title to teddy i was really happy i'm like yo the bad man's gone great but no it was not great because he always came back and he mm -hmm. always came back scummier than ever. It was November of 2007. Edge had been gone for four months. Four months of bliss. Four months of awesomeness. Four months of not seeing his stupid face. And it was Survivor Series 07. It was Batista and The Undertaker in an amazing Hell in a Cell mm -hmm. match. Everything was fine. And I really wanted Batista to win as usual. And I thought that it was going to happen, right? I was pretty confident. And then all of a sudden, yep. the cameraman starts speaking. <laughs> yes, the cameraman. <laughs> Yo, this guy, Edge disguised himself oh. as a cameraman in the Hell in a Cell and just went in there and just started beating up yep. everyone. He hit him with so a camera, cool. got a bunch of chairs, just blasted everyone's head, just left everyone a bloody mess, and he was back. Just like that, Edge was back. And at first, I was like, all right, whatever. You know, Taker and Batista are going to kill him. You know, it's no problem. But no. No, it was a huge problem <laughs> because at Armageddon 07, the next month on pay-per-view, it was a triple threat match. Batista, Undertaker, and Edge. Well, you know what? We, we thought it was a triple threat match because that was not the case. This man brought stunt doubles to a mm -hmm. wrestling match and not just one, but two. He brought in two idiots that looked just like him and basically had them around the ring playing dead, playing dummy. Bro, what the f- That shit was. I, I was not expecting that, bro. They- They- <laughs> Edge, Batista, Undertaker, they just, well, they carried SmackDown around this time. Hang on. They carried SmackDown on their backs. So All many you see great is matches. Edge getting clapped. But no, apparently it's not Edge. Then you see Edge getting clapped again. No, it's not Edge. Then you see like two edges on the floor while another edge is in the. I, I, can't, I can't. You already know what happened. <laughs> Look he at people that just confused. out champion once again. Bro, what? How? Where? Who? Huh? Nah, it, it was too much. This guy was using military tactics in a wrestling match. This guy was out here using guerrilla warfare, using dummy. I, I can't. I can't. So he was world champion once again, right? But that wasn't enough for Edge. No. Nah, 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 nah. He wanted to reach another level of peak sliminess. He needed protection. He needed security. He needed a way to ensure that he stayed at the top. So what does he do? He Vicky ends Guerrero. up in a relationship with yep. Vicky Guerrero. Vicky Guerrero basically becomes Edge's sugar mama yep. and these two buffoons begin to run SmackDown. <laughs> Every year they would come out and these bozos would screw over all oh SmackDown. Oh my the god. The of Edge and Vicky kissing legit make me want to gag. Edge was that desperate. <laughs> Edge was that slimy and disgusting that he got with Vicky Guerrero. Yep. And yo, they were the definition of evil. I remember Vicky made a TLC match at One Night Stand Away and the stipulation was if the Undertaker lost to Edge, he had to be forced to leave the WWE. So what happens in the match? Well, Edge and Vicky have like the f armed forces basically mm -hmm. go out there like it's a desert storm operation and they make sure that the Undertaker does not win this match. Mm -hmm. Edge wins the match and the Undertaker was banished from the WWE. Nah, yo, Edge was a sick, sick man. At one point, he was even engaged to Vicky Guerrero. They were going to get Edge married on an episode of SmackDown. But luckily, savage, at the wedding, bro. Triple H came out and showed Vicky and the world footage of Edge cheating on Vicky and this resulted in the wedding getting called off and Vicky went crazy Vicky went mental she caught off the wedding she hated Edge and she made sure that Edge was gonna pay for this so what she does is make Edge take on the Undertaker in a <laughs> Hell in a Cell match and everyone's like yay Edge is finally gonna get clapped everyone's gonna <laughs> catch up to Edge it's the end it's over and that's what happens right the Undertaker destroys Edge in a Hell in a Cell match he choke slams him from yeah. a ladder through the ring sets it on fire. yeah he threw him to the gates of hell apparently he killed him <laughs> Fire, basically killing Edge, and it's like, yes, finally, 
He's done. He's <laughs> dead. Edge is over. Like, we can move on with our lives. No. But no. No. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? It was November of 2008, okay? Yep. Edge had disappeared, Edge was dead, and now Jeff Hardy stepped up, and Jeff Hardy really took Edge's place, and now he was the top guy on he, SmackDown. He was the Everyone top guy, wanted man. to see Jeff Hardy become the WWE Champion, and he was so close. So Survivor Series 08, the main event was going to be a triple threat match. Jeff Hardy versus Vladimir Kozlov versus Triple H for the WWE Championship. And this was finally going to be the night that Jeff finally wins mm -hmm. the big one. But right before the show, news comes out that Jeff Jeff Hardy was found unconscious at his hotel and that he wouldn't be able to wrestle at the show. So the match became Vladimir Kozlov versus Triple H. Great. Amazing. So the match yeah. is taking place and everyone's like, yo, we want Jeff. Where is Jeff? We want Jeff. And everyone is just hoping and praying that Jeff Hardy comes in and wins the match. So 10 minutes into the match, they're obviously having a five-star classic, right? It's awesome <laughs> five-star classic. Out comes Vicky Guerrero. And at this point, I had never been so happy to see Vicky Guerrero in my life. And she comes out and she's all happy. Oh, yeah. She's, she's here. Excited. And she's He's like, here. we promised you a triple threat match. He's and here. That's yeah, what I remember. Get. Everyone's like, yo. Really? Really? It's happening? And she starts screaming, he's here! He's here! Mm -hmm. He's here! And I was so amped. I was ready. I was about to do my Jeff Hardy dance. You I'm think jumping you know me. for joy. And then all you hear... You think you know me? Oh, what kind of sick joke is that? Why, why is he here? I thought Edge was dead. I thought Edge was done, but no. Apparently, Edge came back from the dead in a match that I, I never in my wildest dreams thought Edge was going to be involved. Edge, he went in there. Anytime you hear you think you know me, shit's about to hit the fan. Like the 50th time in three years, he went in there and he ruined everything. I wanted Jeff Hardy to win the championship. Somehow, Edge walks out the champion. I can't, I can't, I can't. It, it just became a routine. It just became like clockwork. It was like, yo, every like four months, I'm sorry, my guy, but Edge is coming in. Edge is going over. Edge is mm -hmm. going to ruin everything. It doesn't matter. You can kill him, put him through tables, put him through the ring, yep. set him on fire, put him through a ladder. It didn't matter. No matter what, this guy always came back. He always came back. He became champion. He prevailed slimier and scummier than ever. Edge always prevailed. It, mm -hmm. it, it would be like the most random pay-per-views no way out 2009 right he goes in as champion he loses in three minutes oh doesn't matter i guess i can't be wwe champion i'll just go become world heavyweight champion yep. i'll just go beat up kofi yeah, kingston beat the hell out of kofi. And just become the champion i was like, like what this is the thing it's like rules didn't apply for edge this guy <laughs> broke all the rules he bent all the rules whatever he wanted he did this this guy was the worst he was the ultimate super villain yo nobody was safe and i i hate the, i literally hate this man what this man did from 2005 until 2009 it, it's illegal he needs to be arrested he should have been <laughs> prosecuted I, I i can't there has never been a a wrestler and there never will be a wrestler who will ever be on his level of being as slimy as scummy and as disgusting as him this man is single-handedly responsible for 98 percent of my childhood trauma for PTSD <laughs> i have it, it's because of this guy it, it was just too much man no matter what show what championship he would always be there he would just be ready to ruin it all this man i, I swear to you he gave me ptsd whenever something good happened as a kid while i was watching wrestling whenever something positive happened in the back of my head i was always there like oh shit what if, what if i hear that sound you think, you think you know me, me? <laughs> yeah, man, it was just too much but yeah man jokes aside respect to edge at the end of the day edge is responsible for so many moments of our childhood that we're mm -hmm. never gonna forget even though in the moments we hated it even though it hurt even though he did everything to ruin everything for us he was actually making the moments for us. Because of Edge, I'm never going to forget when he cashed in against Cena or The Undertaker, when mm -hmm. he came back to ruin everything for Jeff Hardy. A movie or a TV show can only be as good as the villain, and it's the yep. same thing for WWE. Edge was the perfect villain for the perfect era, and Edge literally made our childhoods. So, yo, do I still hate Edge? Of course. Will I always hate Edge? Of course. He's always going to be my number one villain, my number one enemy. But at the end of the day, I know deep down that this man made our childhood so, so special. At the end of the day, I am so glad that I grew up in the era where I got to see Edge be the villain of my childhood. Yo. It's Edge, man. He was he was so, so slimy. Mr. Opportunity. He's an opportunist. He finds his spot. He picks them. Doesn't matter how they look. Don't matter how scummy they are. He will find a way to become a champion, man. All I want to see in the comments down below. Just you think you know me, man.
That's it. I don't even have to say nothing. You think you know me. And also let me know your favorite edge match. What's your favorite edge match of all time, man? And just put, you think you know me. That's it. I, I ain't got nothing else to say. Appreciate all the love and support. Road to 90K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. I'll see y'all in the next one. Also, you think you know me. Ha <laughs> ha!